Hello again, we've got another Molly tool, and this one I'm glad to say is UK legal. The Leatherman Bond. Now this was just released fairly recently, it was released on the 11th of May uh, this year 2021, and as soon as I saw it, I think I saw some leaked images uh, shared by some other YouTubers and shared on Facebook, and I was quite excited um, when I seen talks about being a non-locking and having a look at the photos it did indeed look like it's non-locking and now that we finally have it I am glad to say that we were correct in thinking there is non-locking now some people across the world especially in the United States might be wondering why would you want a non-locking multi-tool well unfortunately in some places like here in the UK and certain places in Europe uh, we're not allowed to carry a locking blade that includes multi-tools unless we have a good reason for example work which most of the time I'm not doing anything of the sort so I'm sort of just I don't really have much choice but to either break the law or carry a slip joint like the Leatherman Bond now the good thing about the Leatherman Bond is it's non-locking it's also a full-sized multi-tool unlike for example the Leatherman Bond, uh, sorry, the Leatherman uh, Juice series, which is also non-locking, but unfortunately Leatherman has, for some reason, took the decision to discontinue the entire Juice series, which is a real shame because these are great multi tools. I I love the Juice series. I think the Juice CS4 was like the third or fourth Leatherman that I ever got, and uh, it's still one of my favourites. It's probably one of my most carried multi tools. Real shame that they discontinued those. And I think that the price, especially for the second-hand market, uh, is just going to continue to go up, especially if they're in good condition. Could be wrong, just speculation. But anyway, the Leatherman Bond. So as I said, they were just recently released. Now, as you can see, it is a full-size multi tool. Um, we are going to compare it to a few other, a few other multi tools, uh, the rebar and the PST mainly, uh, as a lot of the criticism of the Leatherman Bond. You know, a lot of people are just sort of comparing it to the PST and the rebar, which really isn't unfair because as Leatherman themselves has said, the bond shares the same DNA as the PST. It's basically a modern PST, but with the structure of a rebar. And truth be told, I love it. I think the tool set is great, but it does feel like it's lacking a little bit. I'm not going to lie, I do miss the saw. I do miss the serrated blade. The replaceable wire cutters I'm not too fussed about, but it would be nice to have it. That said, the Leatherman Bond is a lot cheaper than those other multi-tools. Um, £60 I paid for this, and that seems to be the going rate in the UK at the moment. And it's even cheaper in the States. It's $50, which I think is probably about £40, £35. And I've heard of people buying them even less. I think one person on a Leatherman group said they got it for $35, which is just crazy. That's like, what, £20 or something in the UK? My God, if I could buy a, leather, a brand new Leatherman for £20, I'd be buying more than one. I'd probably be buying five or something. That's just an absolute steal. Especially since the prices of multi-tools just seem to go up and up and up. In fact, it's a very welcome surprise that it's only £60. Um, I mean, to be fair, it should be because, as I said, it is sort of missing some features compared to the rebar. The going price for the rebar now, well, I paid £60 for mine about seven or so years ago. And they're up to about 80 or 90 and in some places, in some cases, £100. And to be fair, I think £100 for a rebar is a bit much. In fact, since it's in my hand, you can see there it is very similar, obviously without the lock. But we'll have a look at the features of the bond just shortly and we will compare it to some of those other model tools. Now, straight away, the pocket clip. Yes, it accepts a pocket clip. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, Leatherman. That was a good idea. Um, especially what they've done there uh, with incorporating the uh, the pocket clip from the Leatherman 3P2 and 3P4. Um, I think it's the P2 I have. I don't really remember. I don't think too highly of it. It's okay, but I personally feel it's a bit overpriced and a bit underperforming. That seems to just be most people's opinions, from my observation. But it is a good thing that they allow us to put the the pocket clip from a from the Leatherman free. The problem is, it's a bit overpriced. 
£12 for a single pocket clip and the multi tool does not come with one. Um, it does have the lanyard ring that the rebar has. What it does come with, if I have it here, yep, is uh, the nylon sheath. I'm not really sure if you can get it with a leather sheath. Um, personally, I prefer the leather sheath. This isn't bad. In fact, the, I think Leatherman has actually massively improved the nylon sheath. So it does seem a lot more durable. And the button, instead of Velcro, it is a lot nicer and I imagine it'd be a lot more durable. Um, no place for a bit kit, unfortunately, but it does fit the multi tool kind of. Obviously, you're not really supposed to use it with the pocket clip, but I mean, it works if you want to. No no place for a, a bit kit if you did want to put one in there. Um, the sheath is a bit tall for the multi tool, but it fits fine. That's not going anywhere. Um, and you can only sort of wear it on your belt this way opposed to on its side so that's a bit unfortunate but it's not a deal breaker honestly with a multi tool i would just consider a sheath a free a free extra or something most of us aren't really using those anyway i mean i haven't been i've just been keeping it in my pocket um outside of the tool first i suppose so as you can see there there is no lock it's essentially just a slip joint not too dissimilar from the uh older older uh, multi tools in fact you can see there it's almost identical to the slip joint of the Leatherman kick, which is nowhere near as stiff. Uh, this is quite stiff, we'll get to that shortly. And uh, quickly, what else can I compare it to? The PST, the uh, the granddad of the Leathermans, if you like, the very first uh, Leatherman. The slip joint is pretty much straight. Um, and just quickly because it's so similar again the rebar so you can see of course the locks on the rebar and the non-locking on the bond now you're going to notice the tool set is the exact same as the PST but they've basically just taken the tools from the rebar and put it on the bond so we'll open it up first thing you'll see obviously is the pliers which is, uh, let's see, what pliers are these? I think it's the same one as the uh, Gen 2 Wave. So you can see there, those are basically identical. Yeah, really no difference. I think the kick also shares the same pliers. Um, I'm kind of wishing I brought out some other multi tools now uh, for comparison, but. I just, I just grabbed a handful because I don't really want to have loads of multi tools beside me at the moment. So there, that just gives you an idea of what we're dealing with. Unfortunately, we don't have replaceable wire cutters as I said. I'm not really sure why they did that. I guess it's just to keep costs down. But especially now since nearly all of their multi tools, I mean the Surge, the Wave, Wave Plus even, um, the Rebar, almost all their multi tools now have replaceable wire cutters. I guess with the bond, they were trying to tap into two markets, um, UK and European, with our silly knife laws, and they also thought, hmm, we can use this also as a budget model, which, to be honest, I think it I think it fills both roles fine. Uh, don't be intimidated by the lack of locks. It's actually really, uh, is a really strong slip joint, and because of the shape of the model tool, it's not going to fold on your fingers. Even if it does fold, uh, you'll still have some protection. I did forget to mention as well, when you look at the ruler, on most of the, uh, in fact let me just double check before I say that, no, never mind, never mind the most of the anything, uh, on the rebar and the super tool, the, uh, the ruler is sort of on the face here, on the front, whereas with the, with the bond it's on the side. Uh, the original, the PST, had it on the side, and for a while I was sort of wondering myself, why did they do that? Why did they put it on the side of some multi tools and the face on others? Took me a little while, longer than it should have, uh, to realise, yes, yeah, because that locks there. They couldn't, they couldn't put it there. I suppose they could have, but it would have just been an extra pain in the ass. So why would you keep it simple? I suppose. Don't think there's much more to show you on the other side of the multi tool on the side of the multi tool other than it uses the exact same construction. Um, so again, we'll open it up, and I suppose we'll just fan out all the tools, um, just because it's easier. 
just so you get an idea of what you're dealing with. And we will talk a little bit about that um, slip joint lock up. I don't like calling it lock up because I feel like it's just going to raise the, uh, the eyebrows of uh, UK politicians and you know how much they love their barn hammer. They just can't help themselves. Anyway, so there's your tool set. So you've got your metal work file, um, your medium, sorry, your large driver, if you want to call it that, your medium driver, your all, uh, your knife blade, your 3D Phillips driver, and your uh, combination can opener, bottle opener, uh, with the wire stripper. So basically the exact same tool set as the PST. So we'll just open that up quickly. I think the PST has one extra screw screwdriver um which is a, a really a really small screwdriver i've never found a use for it i suppose it's nice to have we will compare the sizes just shortly so there you can see we've basically got the exact same tool set see if i could lay them side by side in a slightly different configuration so you've got your all your medium driver, your large driver, your knife blade, uh, your file, small driver which the uh, the bond does not have, your Phillips and your Canon bottle opener. So it's basically the exact same tool set, no difference other than that one, that one small screwdriver which to be really honest I'm not going to miss. So if we just close everything up for just now, and we'll see how the model tool looks when it's uh, closed with the knife blade. Because I think most of us, or at least for me anyway, I mainly like model tools for their knives. Um, but it's also nice to have a pair of pliers and um, some screwdrivers on hand. So it basically looks and feels the exact same as the rebar. It's just a bit smaller. It's just a bit lighter. And again, the only thing it really is missing is the saw and the serrated blade, which to be honest, I do quite miss. Um, obviously there's no scissors in it, but the rebar didn't have scissors in it. So you can see there they are quite identical, especially in size and shape. Now it's actually the exact same blade, it's the exact same tools, it's literally rebar tools in the bond. In fact, I would just like to show you something. Uh, if we have a look here at the way the... the uh, rebar locks when you push that obviously it lets you um take that little move that little notch out of the way so it doesn't lock and when you put it into the locked position the lock falls into that notch now i'd like to draw something to your attention because i've noticed one or two people sort of think this is a great idea what they did uh, with this slip joint i mean they've done this for a long time as i said they did it on the kick if you have a look there this blade is 100% a rebar blade. You can see that same notch in there. It's just on a sort of multi-tool slip joint mechanism. And again, they did this a really long time ago. Where have we got my kick? They've done this a really long time ago with the kick. Now the kick has a different blade. I've not really noticed any other multi-tools with the same blade as the kick. But you can see there, same thing. I think it was the te uh, Texas Tool Crib was talking about how um, how different and how innovative, wh whatever the word is, <laughs> I can't say it, innovative or whatever the word is, um, which is interesting because he he collects multi tools. I would have thought he would have caught on to this, but um, unless I've unless I've took him out of context or uh, picked something up wrong, in which case I apologise. But it's just the exact same idea of what they did with the kick and I mean the Leatherman kick is like what 20 years old something like that this was the very first Leatherman I ever bought I thought it was great when I first got it but yeah I'm really I'm really glad to see that they've brought this style back because that means we can carry it in the UK now this is going to be fun a handful of people in the comments are going to say well that's technically non it's technically a locked knife because it doesn't fold blah 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 look go away our knife laws are strict enough as it is. We've got very little option as it is. If you want to make that argument, we've basically got no multiple tools except maybe the Leatherman Squirt that we could legally carry. This is not a lock knife. It still folds. It's still immediately foldable. Might not be fully foldable, but it still folds. I'm still going to carry this. I think most people that 
buy one are still going to carry this and I don't think they're doing anything wrong either. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, I think we're trying to reason with unreasonable people. Nobody's carrying a Leatherman to hurt anyone. And I mean if you were to put any, any force onto it, look what happens. So it keeps your fingers safe but it's still not a lock knife. In fact, if you want to make that argument, you might as well call the, the Boker Plus XS a lock knife. This is closer to a lock knife. Again, if you were to do anything that you shouldn't with this, um, it's definitely not going to fold. Th this would be less painful to the, to the user of the knife if they were to use it against someone. I wish people would stop making this argument. The Leatherman Bond, the PST, they're still folding knives. They don't lock. And even according to gov.uk, a lock knife has a blade that only folds when a button is pressed. Even Heine Haynes is classing this as UK legal. So I think we're overthinking this. Personally, I think you should just put your Leatherman Bond in your pocket and not worrying about it. Further to this, by making this argument, you're putting knives like this at risk. Because maybe you can argue this isn't immediately foldable. One, two, three, close. You could perhaps argue that that's also not immediately foldable. So this is a bit of a silly argument we're making here. Again, I think we're trying to reason uh, with unreasonable people. And uh, I think lastly, or at least close to last anyway, I want to um, just show you against the, the Leatherman rebar. And I do have a couple other talking points about uh, Leathermans, not just the Bond, I'd like to make at the end. So again, the sizes, I'll try and get you an accurate size as possible. So if you just have a look there, I'm not really going to go into exact measurements because I don't feel like that adds any value. Uh, and we're going to also put the wave beside it because it's also an extremely well-known model tool. So that basically gives you an idea of the size of the Leatherman Bond, or at least I hope so. Some people go really into detail about the sizes. This is its thickest point, this is its thinnest point. That's kind of nice, I suppose, but I don't know if it adds any real value. So, it's slightly thinner than the rebar. Not by much. I'm glad it's not too thin, because I do I do like the weight and the feeling of the rebar. In fact, I think it would only be right to also put the, the PST right beside it. So there you can see, you get a much, a much better idea of the sizes. The, re the, uh, the PST is another one that I kind of wish they would bring back permanently. They did this little stunt a few years ago, and that's why I'm going to call it a little stunt. Because I don't think it impressed anyone. Uh, this little stunt where they brought out a collector's edition PST and tried to sell it for £250 or something. I don't think that went too well. They only made like, what, 20,000 of them and they're still, they're still selling them. I don't think many people were impressed with that, and I sure as hell wasn't. It seemed utterly pointless to me. I think a lot of us here in the UK sort of saw that and thought, oh, they're bringing back the PST, I'm going to get one. 250 quid, collector edition, nah, no good. Now, maybe if they did it something more reasonable, like £80, and uh, advertised it as a non-collector's edition, kept it permanently as a work tool, probably would have did all right. And uh, a few other things I'd like to say. Apparently there's also another one, which I think I heard somewhere is expected to be released in, or at least announced in July, I could be wrong, I've just seen that on social media, the Leatherman Curl, which is basically just a sort of small, smaller Leatherman wave, um, similar situation, it, it doesn't have, or at least the photos make it look as, the inside tools didn't have this lock, it had the awl instead of the uh, mini screwdriver, and it only had the straight blade and the, um, uh, what's it called, the file. Again, remove the saw, 
remove the serrated blade. Wish they wouldn't do that. I'm really hoping that's non-locking. I'll definitely be getting that if it's non-locking. If it does lock, I'm probably just going to give it a miss because I don't see the point. Uh, lastly, the Leatherman Bolster. Who knows what that is, what that looks like. I'm crossing my fingers that that's also going to be non-locking for a UK legal carry. It would be nice if that was some sort of like slimmed down or smaller surge. Preferably with all the features of the surge because, I mean, let's just be honest, the surge is the best model tool made. It has all the features that you want, nothing that you don't want. It's nice and strong, heavy duty, and you don't feel like it's going to break on you. Surge is definitely one of my favourite model tools, so if they were to do something along the lines of that, that would be fantastic. But even if they made another model tool um, like this, but with all the features, um, with the saw, with the serrated blade, bonus points if it has scissors. Basically a UK legal, a true UK legal, UK legal rebar would be nice. Now, a couple of additional comments I would like to make. I have shown on my channel ways to make both the rebar and the wave UK legal carry. I personally don't like it. I, it was just annoying me for a long time that we couldn't carry these. I wanted to give myself an option. Truth be told, I didn't feel too safe with it. I mean, especially if I was to hand it to someone else, which I thought I might, and I didn't want someone else having a, a knife folding on a finger. So um, I don't really carry my wave, even though I've still got it as non-locking. But it is nice to have that option. And my method where I jammed open the lock with the rebar, while I still stand by it, I just don't like it. I didn't like the look, didn't like I just I don't like modern model tools at all. I like to keep it as fat to the condition. Um and in closing, I don't know how many times I've said that now, can't make my mind up, but in closing, I think a lot of the time when I'm carrying the bond, I think I'm gonna pair it up with the Victorinox Huntsman because it has the scissors, it has the saw, it's got a secondary blade so this basically gives me three knife blades no serrated blades unfortunately I've noticed that serrated, serrated, I've been using serrated blades a lot more recently for uh, cutting fabrics and cutting wires and things like that um, a lot of the time now um, my dad ends up asking me uh, to have my knife, which obviously I've always got it, but he always wants to borrow it for something now. I'm trying to talk him into getting a Leatherman or a, or a Victorinox, I don't see that happening because whenever he needs something done, I'm usually with him anyway, so he just gets me to cut it. But uh, I, I found a lot of value recently for that serrated blade because of that, so I am kind of missing it. But at least if I carry a Huntsman, um, it does give me most of that capability. Although the two of them together is a bit bulky, especially if I'm wearing joggers and well that's what I find myself wearing most of the time so it kind of weighs it down and sort of clangs about. I, I think I might, maybe, I'm not sure yet, maybe I'll pick up the Victorinox Walker because that just consists of the main blade, the saw and the combination opener. That's it. That might be something to look into in the future and they're only about £15 anyway. So maybe those two make a good combo. We'll see. Anyway, hopefully you found some value uh, in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, in regards to my comments of uh, th me saying this is UK legal carry, I think that's the opinion of, I, th I think it's sort of 50-50. Some people are fine with it, some people aren't. I've noticed some people just carry whatever model tool they want anyway. If I'm going to the woods or going cycling or going to help someone, I take the surge or the rebar. But it's nice to have something like the bond if I'm going to the shop or just going out with my family or something like that. But anyway, let's not make this video a shit show. Let's just try and be polite. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.